This video shows how an organization can invite new vendors to register and then route the vendor's information to people in the organization who can approve the vendor's request. The end result is that a new vendor account is created. In this scenario, the customer's organization owns Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations where the process is carried out. The parties involved in this scenario include a contact person at the vendor's company, the customer's organization that starts the process, and one or more people at the customer's organization who review, approve, or reject the new vendor account. A vendor signs up on a website that is hosted by the customer. The website is anonymously accessible. The request is imported into Finance and Operations. The customer starts the process to create a new user account. The vendor user account will have limited access to Finance and Operations, which uses Azure Business to Business Collaboration, also known as B2B. The new vendor signs into Finance and Operations and enters his or her information in a registration wizard. This creates a vendor request, which is routed to relevant people in the customer's organization. Upon approval, a vendor account is created. The new user can now access specific areas in finance and operations, such as the vendor information workspace. The Prospective Vendor Registration Requests page is where you can find requests from vendors who want to register. The page displays information about the vendor, including the company name, some justification as to why they want to be a vendor, and the name of a contact person at the vendor's company. It also shows the contact person's email address, which is used as the new user account that we are going to set up for the vendor. Click Invite User to start a user request process for provisioning the user. When the provisioning status is User Invited, then we know that the user has a new user account. When the new user, who is the vendor's contact person, signs into Finance and Operations, the page that displays is the Vendor Registration Wizard. This is where the vendor can complete the registration process. First, the contact person needs to choose the country that the vendor is doing business in. This is needed so you can configure the wizard depending on the country that is selected. Next. Determine if there are any questionnaires that need to be answered. If so, a questionnaire can be added to the wizard. The questionnaire can also be configured according to the product category that the vendor has selected. This means that additional questionnaires can be added for the contact person here. I'll go ahead and complete the questionnaire. The questionnaires are, of course, completely configurable in Finance and Operations. So now that we've completed the registration, I'll click Finish. The registration submitted by the vendor will be assigned to a workflow participant who is someone who can approve the vendor. In the work items assigned to me, I can see that I have a vendor request coming in here. Opening the request will show the data that the vendor entered in his or her registration. If there is an address, it will be listed here. as well as some contact information. In our example, the contact person's name is Alexander Bartlett. And in our example, we did not add a lot of information during the registration, which is why not much data is displaying here. I can see the procurement categories that the vendor wants his products to be included in, and I can see the business information that was entered. And I'll be able to see the questionnaires that were completed. And in viewing the questionnaires, I can see both the questions and the answers. The questionnaires can, of course, provide much more information than this 
if I want to approve the vendor based on this information. I'll go ahead and approve the vendor now. First, I need to add a vendor group which is required for creating vendor accounts. And then I need to decide whether the contact person, who is now a vendor collaboration user, should continue to be this kind of user. If needed, we can change the vendor's privileges and security permissions so that the user has access to other capabilities that are part of vendor collaboration. If I don't think that the vendor contact person should continue to be a vendor collaboration user, I will set the slider to no. Now I can approve the vendor. To finish the process and verify the actions I've just taken, I'll go to the All Vendors List page where I can see the vendor account I've just created, Margie's Travel. Thanks for watching.